components let you use different instances of your designs across your projects. This is especially useful when building something that has multiple similar elements that all need to have unique property values, like menus, or as you can see, this scoreboard is made of the same component four times. However, if I press play, each component has a unique image, a unique name, and a unique score. And of course, this is all controlled using data binding. So if I open the scorecard view model and select the score property, I can go over here and control each of these scores in real time. And of course, I can export this Rive file, embed it into my app, website or game and control these properties using code. So I'm going to make this scoreboard from scratch so you can see exactly how this was set up using components. First things first, I'm going to drag my images into Rive. As you can see in my assets panel, I'm using a PSD. This contains four layers, each of them their own unique profile picture. I'm now going to create an artboard and change its size. Now I'm actually going to delete the artboard's fill and I'm going to rename the artboard Scorecard. Next, drag one of your images onto the artboard. Mine's a little bit big, so I'm just going to scale it down. I'll move it over here. And now I'll create some text shortcut T. I'll call this name and duplicate this text and move it over. And I'll call this score. Real quick, I'm going to highlight the text and change its color to black. Next up, highlight all three layers. Tap Shift L to put them into a layout. And this automatically organizes them into a row. I'm going to call this row parent because it's going to be the highest level layout in this design. Now let's go through some of its properties. Up here, you can see that it is hugging the width and the height of all three of its children. I can move this layout around, which means that absolute positioning is switched on. And we have a set number of pixels on the left side and a set number of pixels on the top. Now, I don't actually want absolute positioning, so I'm just going to switch it off. And because absolute positioning is now switched off, I can change this fitting from hug to fill and this one as well. And by doing this, our parent layout is now filling the width and the height of its parent, which is the artboard itself. You can see over here that our layout is aligning its children to the top left, and it's also given a horizontal gap between its children of 99 pixels. I'm just going to set this to zero, and I'll change the alignment to center. Now I want to put a gap between the name and the score. And to do this, I need to put these two elements in their own layout. So I'll just open up the parent layout and highlight the two bits of text and tap Shift L to put them in a row. And I'll call this row text row. And now I can go up here to the text row properties and change it to fill the width and fill the height. As you can see, its children are aligned to the top left, but we can change this just here. And now I can put a gap between these two bits of text just by clicking this again. Awesome. Now I just want to put a small gap between the image and this text row. How do I do this? Well, we have our image and our text row. Therefore, I can set a gap between the two by highlighting their parent and going over here and creating a horizontal gap. Next, I want to put some padding on the left hand side and the right hand side. So I'll just go down here and set some padding. And finally, I want to give this a background color. So just go down here, background, click plus, fill, now we can change the corner radius so that we have some nice round corners. And now I'm just noticing that we have padding on the left and right, but we don't have any padding on the top. So to make sure that they're always the same, I'm actually going to change this fitting from fill to hug and I'll set some padding on the top and bottom. So now if I zoom out and I highlight my scorecard artboard, I can change the size of this. And when I change the width, our design adjusts the width. But if I change the height, then nothing changes. But to be honest, I don't actually want to be able to change the height of the artboard. So I'll change its fit to hug the height of its children as well. Awesome. So we can change the width 
and our design automatically adjusts, and we'll just leave the height as it is. Now I want to add some data binding to this project so that we can change the image, the name, and the score. The first thing I need to do is highlight the artboard and go up here to create a new view model. This will automatically bind view model one to our artboard. And we can see this view model if we go over to the data panel. And here it is. I'm just gonna call it scorecard. Now I want to give my scorecard view model three properties, an image property, a string property, and a number property. And create an image property. I'll call it PFP. A string property, call it name, and a number property, call it score. If you highlight your view model, you can go over here and see each of your property's initial values. I'm going to set the score's initial value to just be 100, the name to be player 1, and for the profile picture, you get a drop down of all of the images contained in your assets panel. I'm just going to pick this one, and now we need to go into our hierarchy panel and go into our design and bind our three elements to their respective view model properties. So for this profile picture, I'll go over here and right click, data bind, and we'll take in the profile picture view model property. Then I'll open up the text row and the two text layouts and their text runs. For this first text run, which is the name, we'll go up here and right click on the text run, data bind, and we'll take in the name view model property, which is a string. Next, we'll go over to this text run, which controls the score, and we'll right click, data bind, and we'll take in the score view model property. However, the score view model property is a number, and what we're doing right now is using a number to control a string. And in Rive, you can't do this without first converting that number into a string. So what I need to do is go over to our data panel and click plus and create a converter string convert to string. Now go over to the convert to string properties over here and click round decimals and remove trailing zeros. We can now go back into the hierarchy panel down to our text run right click again, update bind, and for this score view model property, we can now add the converter, convert to string. So what we're now doing is taking in a number property, converting it to a string, and then using that string to control this text run. So when I press play, and then go up to my data panel, and highlight my view model, you'll see that I can change the score, and that will change our design. I can change the name to player whatever, and that changes the name, and I can change the profile picture. Awesome. What I can do now is create a new artboard, shortcut A, and I want to use this design four times in this artboard. And to do this, I need to turn this scorecard artboard into a component. So just highlight the artboard, and go over here, and you can change it to a component. Now that the scorecard is a component, I can select my new artboard and tap N to use the component tool. And when I click, I get a drop down list of every component in my project. At the moment, I only have the one. So I can move this into place and duplicate. Awesome, we now have four copies of this component. Now what happens when I press play? Nothing. The image remains the same, the name is the same, and so is the score. Why is this? Well, this artboard currently doesn't have access to this view model or its properties. This is because it isn't bound to this view model. In fact, it's not bound to any view model at all. What we could do is bind it to the scorecard view model and then when we press play, all four components are going to have identical property values. So if I change this score, then it's going to update all four components. We don't want this. We want four different instances 
of the same component. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to highlight my artboard, go up here and remove scorecard as its view model. And then I'm going to create its own new view model. I'll go over here and rename this view model scoreboard. Awesome. Now we need to highlight scorecard and create four instances of this view model. Just go up here to the instances panel and you'll see that by default, this view model only has one instance. We can go into the instance settings and create three more. I'll call this one instance one, one instance two, instance three and instance four. I'm going to give instance one a score of that, leave its name as player one and I'll set its profile picture to PFP one. Then for instance two, I'll give it a random score. I'll set the name to player two and I'll set profile picture to instance three random score, call it player three, PFP three. And instance four, give it this score, change its name to player four, and its profile picture four. So now all four instances have completely different names, scores, and profile pictures. And what we now need to do is give our scoreboard view model access to these four instances and their unique view model property values. Go over to your scoreboard view model. We're now going to give it four properties of the scorecard view model. One, two, three, four. And we can give each of these properties access to a specific instance of the scorecard view model. So for instance, this first one, I can go over here and you'll see that it has access to instance one. Second one, I'll give it access to instance two. Third one, instance three. And the fourth one, instance four. I'm gonna make sure that these all have clear names. So I'll just number them. And the last thing we need to do now is highlight each of our components and bind them to their own unique instance of the scorecard view model. So just highlight the first one, go up here and bind it to the first one. Second one, number two, three, and four. Now when I press play, each component has unique profile picture, name and score because once again what we did was we created four instances of the scorecard view model loaded those instances into these properties and bound this view model to this artboard i can even highlight the score number property and go up here and change it in real time so in summary, this tutorial has been about components and instances, but if you want to learn more about incorporating your instances into layouts and adding or removing those instances at runtime, go watch our tutorial about lists.